What is going on, everybody? Spiker Zenith here. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a uh, MacBook upgrade, actually. I have an A1342 from 2010, uh, maybe 2009. Um, and it has the uh, a spinning platter hard drive in it that I had replaced at one point. Uh, the battery is missing. Uh, the battery decided to expand and try to kill itself. Uh, it kind of like screwed the touchpad up a little bit. There's some animal hair there. Uh, but the touchpad does seem to work. However, with a... Uh, a MacBook like this, and maybe most of the new ones are the same way. If you do not have a battery installed, your computer will not recognize uh, this is an actual device. It'll say uh, connect a Bluetooth device or no Bluetooth device found or something like that uh, for a touchpad. And the only thing that'll work is like the, the clicking of the actual uh, touchpad itself and moving it around. You can't use like the tap functions and you can't use the scroll functions and the zoom and all that junk uh, if you don't have a battery installed. So... I lost that functionality. So here I've got an eBay battery. Supposedly uh, it's an Apple OEM one. Hopefully it is. Uh, I also have uh, an SSD to do an SSD upgrade to uh, with this bad boy. Now you will need a few tools. You'll need like a uh, Phillips. I think it's like a PH1, I believe. What size are you, bud? Let's see if we can zoom in on it so we can read it. We cannot. I can't get it to zoom where I want to. I believe it's a PH1 pH0, pH1, something like that. Uh, pH0, actually. You'll need a pH0 Phillips bit to get into this bad boy. You'll also need the... All right, I found it. You're going to need one of these uh, triple uh, wing screwdrivers here. Get it to zoom here. You need this guy here where it's got a uh, three-prong tip on it. Uh, if you buy a battery, uh, like on eBay or something like that or Amazon, a lot of the kits come with the actual screwdrivers you need. That's probably where this one came from, I'm sure. Uh, but anyway, we're going to flip this bad boy over. I'm going to get the camera set up in a way that makes sense. Uh, you'll also need one of these serial ATA adapters uh, that you just plug straight into the drive itself. You'll plug up a serial ATA cable and supply the drive with power. And you'll be able to uh, plug that into the USB port on your uh, MacBook. And that will allow you to upgrade and transfer your information from your spinning platter hard drive onto your new SSD upgrade and that'll make things a lot easier because it does take a long time to install an operating system on a MacBook. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get this guy set up and I will bring you back when we're ready. Here let's get a little benchmark here. I'm going to go ahead and put a timer up on the screen and we'll see how long it takes to boot starting now. Power button pressed. Lights on. You can see the light is on. Login screen. That took uh, just a little, a little less than two minutes. So that's, you know, that's pretty slow, but it's not the worst thing ever. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get this guy uh, taken apart and I'll show you as I go. All right. Once you get all eight pH zero screws out of the bottom of your case. Now this is uh, for the A1342 model. Uh, these are, you can get these pretty cheap or used to be able to. Uh, but anyway, these laptops uh, these are all the same size for this one, but the uh, A1278s and uh, the other models, uh, there are longer screws. Uh, three of them are going to be longer on the bottom. Uh, just make sure you like keep them in some sort of like uh, orientation where you know where they came from, so you don't put them in the wrong hole, because that's really annoying. Now we're going to go ahead and pull this cover off, if I can even do it with one hand, while holding my phone with the other that I'm recording this with. Pull this cover off, not too bad, everything's exposed in here. I had a little baggie I'd shoved in here uh, with the screws for the battery in it because the battery I had removed. Now this touchpad here, like I said, if this if you get battery expansion and this touchpad like pushes out like ours did, uh, and you remove the battery, make sure uh, that you keep in mind this touchpad may be broken. It may not work again. You may need to replace it. And they're not expensive. They're not hard to replace. Uh, there's just three screws, uh, maybe four screws, something like that on the bottom here. There's just a few screws down here. There's four. Uh, four here. And you just pull that guy off and this whole thing comes out as an assembly. Uh, it's not hard to replace. Uh, the ribbon cables can get bad as well and they can cause problems. Uh, but I'm not sure if that's the issue here. I'm assuming that it's just a battery because if you unplug the battery, uh, these touch pads act up. This one does work. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, replace stuff. As you can see, I replaced this hard drive initially with a Western Digital. A uh, little black edition guy. But it's not fast enough. Waiting two minutes to boot is, is pretty painstaking. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get things swapped out here. It's pretty easy to do. All right. And I've opened up this new battery. It did come with uh, screwdrivers, uh, the tri-wing, which is what they call the three-sided one, 
and a uh, PH0 as well. Add that to my collection. I've got plenty of those. A uh, little foam pad here. Neat. Uh, this battery was supposed to be original, but I kind of, you know, I always doubt that. Pull the protective film off. You don't need to leave that on. No one's going to ever see it. Uh, it does have the uh, sticker on there, which is good. Uh, this says, designed by Apple in California, so they made it look uh, Apple-esque if it isn't. Well, this might be. It's got a serial number on there. Should have been a new battery. Can't see it. Doesn't really matter. Uh, so anyway, we're going to get this guy installed. Uh, pretty simple to install once you have all the uh, screws out and the old one out. You just slip it in here. Uh, backside first. And it just falls into place. It's, it's very, very simple. Here's something fun. Don't be a dummy like me and forget the screw that's way over here. <sighs> dummy. Now i got to take this whole thing apart again just to get to it. All right. So this is my setup here for my SSD. No, come back. Uh, I've got my uh, my adapter. Get a proper adapter uh, that you don't need to hook up an external serial ATA cable for. Uh, and you don't need a power adapter for. It's just kind of silly what I've got going on here. I bought this because I wanted the uh, IDE setup on it, you know, because it could be useful for like an older laptop or an old, you know, IDE drive. I do a lot of like retro stuff and I really like having that. I don't show a lot of that on here though. Uh, but anyway, so we've got our uh, AT power supply. Nice and loud. Fans going. You can hear it. Yeah, look at that Pepsi can back there. Anyway, uh, so I got this set up here with an adapter. Uh, as you can see, it does detect the SSD. Um, I'm not going to bother formatting it in here. There's really no point in doing that. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead now. We're going to restart this uh, laptop. Uh, but before we do that, I'm actually going to go to System Preferences here. And I'm going to show you something. If you go into Trackpad, now my trackpad is showing up and working properly. Before... This would just say uh, set up Bluetooth device and it would just like have a searching thing. So you do need a battery installed, a working battery, uh, in order for your MacBook to, uh, you know, work properly. So I am going to plug this MacBook in before I do anything else. Uh, not to charge necessarily, but just because I'm copying over an operating system. And you're going to want to make sure your MacBook is plugged in. So I'm going to plug in this MagSafe while you stare at my hand as I do it. Come on. Do your MagSafe stuff. Make sure we got our little green light. Good. It went bright. Good to go. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and restart this thing. And when we restart it, we're going to hold Control and F. Uh, like just, or uh, like Command F. This guy, not Control. Uh, hold Command F. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and restart it. And we're going to hold Command and not F, R. Uh, yes, I do want to keep those. I want to keep those going here. So I'm going to hold Command and R. And that's going to enter recovery mode. Uh, once the MacBook uh, restarts. All right, once you got this bad boy loaded up and ready to go, uh, once you load up into the uh, recovery mode, you're going to go into Disk Utility, and you're going to hit Continue. Boop. You have to click the actual clicker on there. I'm moving in a little bit closer here, and we're going to have to format this hard drive, this SSD, the external one now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and erase, and we're going to use uh, Extended Journaled, of course. Uh, just leave this scheme the way it is and hit erase. And it'll do its thing. We'll come back when this is done. Shouldn't take very, very long. All right, and while you're here in the disk utility, you're going to hit first aid. Uh, and then you're going to hit run. You're going to run it on your highlighted external drive. And this will do everything that it needs to do. And my little light over there is blinking. Uh, to get this drive ready uh, to be a bootable drive. So we're going to hit done on this. All right, and after we've uh, ran first aid on the drive, you're going to click that guy, run first aid on it. Uh, it's going to make it ready to go. Then you will be able to do what's called a restore, and you're going to highlight the external drive. You want to restore this drive, and you're going to store it from your, your internal original hard drive, which is Untitled 1 for me. So I've got that selected. I'm going to hit restore. All right, guys, and now we're to the position where it says operation successful. I went ahead and uh, showed the details here. If you hide the details, it'll look like that. Uh, hit done, and now we're going to go ahead and turn the computer off. It changed the name. I don't know why it did that, but it's all right. It really doesn't matter to me what it's called. Um, I could probably change the name from here. No, I can't. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and next that out. Go up here, and we're going to shut down the Mac, and then we're just going to remove the uh, old drive and put the new one in. All right, now on the side of the uh, actual drive itself, they've got these uh, Torx bits. Uh, they are tiny little guys. I'm not sure what size they are, but they are tiny little Torx bits. 
Uh, so you are going to need a Torx bit to remove those. Pretty annoying, but that's just the way it is. You could probably get them out. Honestly, you could get pliers around the outside of this and just turn it with like some needle nose pliers and get it out. Uh, it's an external thread. So then you're going to take those pliers and install it on your SSD as well on the same side. Uh, there are only two on the one side and then the bumpers uh, go on the other. The rubber uh, shock absorbers go on the other side. All right, we got her all buttoned up in there and ready to go. It was pretty simple to do. It's self-explanatory. It really doesn't need any explaining. So now I'm going to flip it over for the first time after installing the SSD and getting the operating system set up. A little bit of choppy frame rate, but I guess it'll have to do. So, yeah, it's not too bad. You go ahead and start her up. Push the button. We'll see how long it takes. Finally got the Apple logo. And now we wait. Look how fast that's going now. Man. Oh, man. Finally. So much faster than it was before. Now, within uh, this operating system, El Capitan, and I'm, I'm sure others, you have to designate uh, that you have an SSD because trim support is not like magically enabled like it is with the Windows, uh, what, 7 and higher. There it is. Logged in. All the information is still there. Uh, we're going to enable trim support. It's going to be just a minute. I'll bring you back for that. All right, and the command to uh, start this up. First of all, we need to open our terminal. So we need to uh, just get out of here. You don't need to be in here for anything. Uh, you can bring your, not Safari, dumb. Go to your launcher. Uh, and then you can just uh, go into other and then terminal. We need to type this in. Type in S-U-D-O trim force. And then boop, just like that. Come on, zoom. And then enable. And then put your password in. And yes, we are sure we want to proceed. I'm not reading any of that stuff. So yes. And then hit Y to reboot. It's enabling trim on the drive. You will need to enable this on the SSD or you will have problems. It'll automatically reboot. And trim force will be enabled. Trim, of course, will be enabled. Oh, I'm just reading things. All right, now that we're back from a fresh restart, go into the Apple. Uh, go into System Preferences. And wait a millisecond. So much snappier. Man, it's crazy how fast this thing is now. Um, I lied. We actually <laughs> we want to go to about this Mac. I got a little too excited uh, about this Mac here. It's just crazy how much faster this is. Uh, system report. And then back down here to serial ATA. And then we go down here and we look for trim support enabled. Yes. Guys, and that's all you need to do to upgrade your Mac with an SSD and to replace the battery. Uh, guys, if you like what you've seen here, if this was helpful to you at all, give me a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.